It's time for the Raw Review, April 30th, hot off the heels of Extreme Rules. The show opens up, and we see that the opening video package says it's WWE Raw starring Brock Lesnar. Uh, one of Brock Lesnar's um, contract agreements that was talked about on the last episode of Raw. The show starts off with John Laurinaitis and Brock Lesnar in the ring. There's a promo. Triple H interrupts, comes to the ring, and says that Brock Lesnar is not going to get all those contract uh, agreements that he asked for. No limo, no private jet, no uh, starring Brock Lesnar tagline at the beginning of the show. And um, this upsets Brock Lesnar, and, and Triple H gets distracted by John Laurinaitis. Uh, Brock attacks Triple H with a Kimura, which is basically a hammer lock, a key lock, um, what it's referred to in MMA, and breaks Triple H's arm. Of course, of course, it's kayfabe. I mean, um, Brock Lesnar has been opening up uh, John Cena, and that has been real, but this, however, is not. Of course, they're not going to let him break his arm, and, uh, you know, that's to be expected. But this was a pretty good opening segment. It really shows Brock as a destructive monster. Cole says that this pretty much has got to be Brock Lesnar's uh, point where he's going to get fired because uh, he has gone after the COO and uh, he's there just to conduct business, not to wrestle. So, of course, you know that this is going to lead to a Lesnar Triple H match in the future, which. You know, I'm really not looking forward to. I want Triple H to stay far, far away from the wrestling ring as, you know, as much as possible. That should have been his last match at WrestleMania. I don't understand why WWE wants to push another match at Triple H. It's enough already. Triple H has had a very, very long run in the WWE. Very, very long. He uh, came in in 95 and and wrestled full time up until 2010 it's time to end it already time to end the run triple h do not wrestle anymore i would say call this match off but they've already started uh but WWE has called off programs before like cm punk and kevin nash listen uh, not saying that this match will turn out well. I just think that Lesnar has got his hands full. Um, you know, a bunch of names are dropped in this promo. CM Punk and Randy Orton. There's going to be a lot of competition coming Brock's way. They don't need Triple H. Uh, anyway, Eve comes out, says that there's going to be a beat the clock challenge. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, it's really funny that we're going to have a beat-the-clock challenge considering that every match on Raw in the past few weeks has been under two minutes. So, I really don't see the point why the matches need to be beat-the-clock when they're already short. That's because that's how they're being booked, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. And that doesn't, lend, that doesn't lend a lot to the credibility because what sense does it make having beat-the-clock when the matches are already fucking short? It would play out the same way even if they weren't considered beat the clock matches. Anyway, this is going to um, determine number one contender at over the limit. We start off with the U.S. champion Santino and The Miz. I didn't even bother reviewing this matchup on my Extreme Rules review because I didn't fucking feel like it. Uh, but anyway, U.S. title is not on the line here. This is beat the clock. The Miz's um, time is... Four minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, finishing him off with the skull crushing finale. This was, you know, of course it wasn't that great. I mean, you know, there's a sense of urgency. It was super fast. You know, it's like star quality match of one star if I really have to rate it. But, you know, it's beat the clock, so you're not really going to expect much in terms of quality and, uh, you know, pacing. Of course not. Uh, next matchup is, is a triple threat matchup between Layla, Brie Bella, and Nikki Bella. It's a triple threat match, not a handicap match. Interesting. It's for the Divas title, which Layla won last night. Um, you know, you remember Layla, right? Yeah, I barely do either. But, you know, sadly, uh, she's back. And this matchup, 
goes a couple of seconds, basically the uh, the Bellas are arguing with each other, and Layla uh, drop kicks one of them into the other and pins one of the Bellas. Don't remember who it is. Don't really care. Um, so that's really interesting. And uh, oh, Michael Cole mentions later on in the show that the Bellas have been fired. Now, I don't know if they've been released or not, but they're being written off TV. That's at least what PW Torch is reporting at the moment. I really don't fucking care. The Divas division doesn't have any credibility at all. They don't even give them any time. They put Layla and Nikki in a matchup at the pay-per-view last night, which stunned me. And that matchup only lasted two minutes. WWE loves that two-minute that two minute formula, obviously. They don't have any confidence in the Divas anymore. So if they don't have any confidence, why even have a division? If you don't believe in your own product, you might as well not have a product. And that being the Divas division. So just end it already. Okay, so anyway, next beat the clock is Jericho and Big Show. Um, basically, Jericho's actually controlling most of this matchup. Um, Big Show contributing very little to it. Basically, no selling most of the moves. Uh, I don't even really know what to rate this. A half a star. I mean, I'm not really even going to focus too much on rating these matches. I just have to say that, you know, Big Show is horrible, fucking bad. You know, when he was in his feud with Daniel Bryan, he looked motivated. Now, I'm not so sure. Uh, actually, I am. I think that he's fucking horrible. And now he's performing the worst he has in years. Extreme Rules, not his fault, but that matchup was an embarrassment. WWE obviously doesn't have that much faith in Big Show um, to get into any long matches nowadays because his WrestleMania Extreme Rules matches were painfully short. You know, and it's funny because his matches are painful. Um, so, anyway, the finish is completely fucked up. Jericho goes for the... Uh, Walls of Jericho. He hits a lion salt. Um, yeah, Big Show no sells that lion salt like nobody else does. I've seen him receive this move before. He no sells it. Fucking terrible. Terrible. Fucking awful. Uh, selling by Big Show in this matchup. He just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Um, anyway, Big Show goes for a big boot on the outside. Jericho moves out of the way and he flips over the barricade. Um, Jericho slides back into the ring and the clock ends right when the, um, the referee is counting. So th this was just fucking terrible, terrible. I mean, the, I, I don't even know what the fuck to say about this because the referee wasn't supposed to count that slow. Jericho wasn't supposed to tie with Miz's time, but that's what he did, and um, I just couldn't even fucking believe it, They how badly they fucked up this finish, it was an embarrassment, you got Cole and the King arguing, you know, the, the, wh wh who, who, wh what happened here, did Jericho beat the time, did he tie with the time, did he not beat it, I, you know, anyway, uh, they say that they're gonna work this out when they get back from the commercial break, they never do. <laughs> uh, when they get back from the commercial break, they go right to a Bros Clay and JTG matchup. They announce later on, somewhere in the show, that um, basically when the when the next ma when the next beat the clock match comes, that yeah, Jericho didn't beat the time. What a fucking mess! What a mess of a finish and a mess of a match. Uh, Brodus Clay and JTG. I mean, you know, I don't even feel like giving this a half a star. I really should give it a dud. I mean, I was just saying it because Jericho tried. I want to give him a half a star to Jericho, and that's a big show. Anyway, Bros Clay and JTG. JTG, where the fuck has he been? He's been on NXT, and uh, but he hasn't been there the past couple of weeks. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. What is JTG even doing in WWE anymore? Just release this, man. He is wasting everybody's time. You know if they do that... You know that um, fucking Impact is going to... Uh, TNA, Impact Wrestling, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is just going to hire JTG because they hire all the rejects and they'll probably make him world champion. Fuck, I guess he'd be better than Bobby Roode. 
Uh, but I don't want to get into that right now. We're not talking about fucking Impact. We're talking about fucking WWE. Anyway, this is just a quick squash. It's fucking awful. Bruce Clay was also at the pay-per-view last night in another fucking awful match against Dolph Ziggler. He's wasting everybody's time. I'm just, you know, I just can't even fucking take it anymore. And with, with Brodus Clay, I mean, this is fucking ridiculous. I see JR wrote a blog where he's actually saying that, uh, that we're a microwave generation, us fans, us young fans, because we want instant gratification. I don't want instant gratification. I just want Brodus Clay to fuck off my TV. He's a waste of time. It's a stupid fucking gimmick. He brings the little kids into the ring and is dancing with them. Fuck this shit. It's lame, boring, tiresome. It's a Rikishi gimmick gone wrong. Anyway, next match, Randy Orton, Jack Swagger. I really want to say that this matchup is like a star in three quarters. I'm actually going to rate this one. There, there was chemistry in this matchup. Anybody could see it as clear as day. Uh, Randy Orton beats the time with an RKO, but I really have to pay my respects to this matchup. Jack Swagger should be so much more in the WWE. This was fucking incredible. I have to say, I'm seeing more in Jack Swagger than I did when he was actually the world champion. I see, you know, maybe this is going to benefit Swagger. Because the thing is, this man is really trying to get noticed. And you can see that he really wants to be at the top again. Same thing like Dolph Ziggler. I mean, but I think that... The thing here is, though, they're really fucking destroying his confidence by uh, being defeated so quickly in this matchup. I mean, Jack Swagger is a tap caliber superstar. Uh, I mean, this guy is a really great technician in the ring. He's got a, a lot of agility. Um, great spot in this matchup where Jack Swagger goes for a slingshot splash in the corner. Randy Orton jumps up and kicks him in midair when he's slingshotting himself. It looked great. Uh, spot on. Would love to see a rematch. Um, this really could be a main event on Aurora or SmackDown or make for a good pay-per-view matchup. But I doubt they're going to do it. Um, you know, at least not anytime soon. Uh, the tag Team Championships are on the line. Primo and Epico versus R-Truth and Kofi Kingston. We get a replay of last week. Where Zack Ryder teamed with um, Santino Morella to defeat Primo and Epico. Well, you know, that's really interesting. So why are R-Truth and Kofi Kingston getting the title shot if Ryder and Santino run won last week? Doesn't that make them number one contenders? I don't even fucking know. WWE's really fucking breaking my brain. Just stomping on it. I don't understand the logic they're booking. Anyway, uh... Smash leaves a lot to be desired. Long story short, we got new tag team champions. Awful, awful title reign. But that's not Primo and Epico's fault. That's because they never got booked to fucking wrestle a matchup uh, that was ever on TV. They would go weeks and weeks without going unnoticed. And they wouldn't even put their matches on superstars. They were just not on any WWE programming or webisodes at all. So you really can't blame them. You know, there was some decent action here. I'm really just going to give this match a star because it was really just a throwaway. It's insulting to the tag titles. Don't understand it at all. Next matchup, Great Kali and Kane. Uh, this matchup is a fucking dud. Yeah, I'm actually rating this matchup. Why? Because this was just a fucking dreadful effort. You know, last night at the pay-per-view, if Randy Orton didn't carry Kane, we would have had an awful opener. But this was just fucking terrible. Great Kali and Kane has been a WrestleMania match, I think, twice. And they had it a dozen times on TV. You are not going to get a good match out of these two guys, no, how, no matter how much you fucking try. I'm just got to say that to the booking team right now. You could try as hard as you fucking want. You will never get a good match out of these two guys. Kane is washed up. Great Kyle Lee just can't fucking get it done in the ring. He's slow. Just has no ability at all. This is just a fucking insult. Uh, and I have to say something right now. 
Uh, I w if they had to have a beat the clock challenge, this went to a no contest, by the way. If you're gonna have a no contest, why not give the spot to Dolph Ziggler? Dolph Ziggler was nowhere to be found on the fucking show. He didn't even escort Jack Swagger to the ring, by the way. I'm just saying, Great Khali should have been out. Dolph Ziggler should have been in. You know, I would have loved to see that go to a no contest. At least we could have had a little something to be excited for. Daniel Bryan and Jerry King Lawler round out the night for the the last Beat the Clock Challenge matchup. Um, and uh, I just have to say here, <laughs> this is fucking awful. Um, another really fucking awful match. Daniel Bryan tried to get the King into it, but the King no sells an Irish whip into the corner. I, I can't even begin to tell you, the King was never a good wrestler. Never, ever. I said that in my King of the Ring DVD review. I don't know where the fuck they got in their heads, the fans, that this guy was ever decent. Anyway, you, you, you've you got the king in his fucking fist drop from the second rope. Daniel Bryan kicks out of that shit. Slaps on a, um, a yes lock at the kick him in the fucking head. And uh, I, I have to say... Uh, I am so happy because Brian submits Lawler and he is now going to face CM Punk at Over the Limit and I am so fucking happy. I am so fucking happy about this that it was not Orton and it's Daniel Bryan. This is incredible. You know that this is going to be a solid fucking matchup, a classic. It might even be match of the year. Yeah, I, I'm going to fucking say it right now. This might even be match of the year. Who knew that a fantastic match would be birthed out of what a catastrophe this final beat the clock matchup was. The King should never get in the ring again. And Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are going to go on to have one of the best fucking matches of all time. Why? Because they put on some real clinics on Raw the past couple of weeks. Um, like a, a couple, I mean, a couple of months ago, they had like two or three matches on consecutive shows and they really brought the house down. Uh, why is this at over the limit, such a massive matchup like this and not SummerSlam? I really don't know, but I'm just happy that it's on any pay-per-view at all. I'm just going to pick my spots here and just be happy that WWE is even giving this to us at all. The first time on pay-per-view... And if this matchup goes 20 minutes, I will just thank WWE and and try not to criticize them as much anymore because they give me they give me this matchup with no bullshit. I will be indebted to them because I I know I'm gonna love this matchup if it's done right. Um, anyway, this next segment comes and we got John Laurinaitis and. John Cena in the ring, and John Laurinaitis is going to announce John Cena's over the limit opponent. Now, you know, I think it was kind of obvious. And, and who comes out next? Well, Lord Tensai. How about Lord Tensai? Lord Tensai. Hey, how about Lord Tensai? Yeah, Lord Tensai. Everybody loves Lord Tensai, right? Lord Tensai. You, you gotta love this guy. Uh, anyway, the former Albert makes his way to the ring. And you know, and but guess what? This is not the opponent. Laurinaitis announces that he's going to be his opponent, and uh, you've got everybody just mauling John Cena all at once. Laurinaitis is, takes off John Cena's sling and just beats the shit out of him, stomping his arm into the steel steps. Uh, so I don't even know if this matchup is going to take place at over the limit. I hope the fuck it doesn't. Also interesting that Lord Tensai was not at fucking Extreme Rules. And everybody else was besides Lord Tensai. Because I I really can't put my finger on it. Why is WWE unsure of Lord Tensai? But I don't know. I really don't know what they're doing here. Um, Lord Tensai has got a, a fucking victory over John Cena. And... Uh, but he's not going to be the opponent. Is he going to be at it over the limit at all? That remains to be seen. Anyway, Laurinaitis 
and John Cena are going to probably have a fucking dud at the pay-per-view. How could that matchup possibly be good if it's taking place? How dare it be on the same show as Daniel Bryan and CM Punk? Well, anyway, I don't even care. Uh, This show, as a whole, was... You know... I, I don't I don't even fucking know the way how this show is shaping up over the limit. We've got one really good matchup and we're probably gonna have a whole bunch more shitty ones. We've got three weeks until this pay per view and um which really doesn't give us a lot of time to work with. We have four weeks for extreme rules, we've only got three to build for over the limit. Uh so I don't know how seriously WWE's going to take this pay per view. Um but anyway, it'll be interesting to see how it builds up. We've already got one matchup that's going to be match of the year candidate. It's almost a lock even before you see it. And uh, you're going to have one dud in Cena and Laurinaitis. Um, but maybe that matchup might not even happen. What's in store for Brock Lesnar? I don't even know. WWE might even sell that they're going to release him. Maybe bring him back. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen with it? A very, very confusing show with not a lot of answers, a lot of weirdness, and uh, a horrible fucking botched finish in here. Uh, Anyway, was the show a success? Well, it built up for over the limit, but there was a lot of fucking sucky shit on here that I really would love to forget and never remember again. But anyway, I'll see you for SmackDown. Um, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to complain. But we've got a decent main event for that one. We've got got, uh, Randy Orton um, and Sheamus teaming up to take on Kane and Daniel Bryan. That should be an interesting match. Obviously, those feuds are not over. I wish the Kane and and Randy Orton tag... uh, The the Randy Orton and Kane... uh, feud is over hopefully the tag match ends it all i hope because they really got to seal up this feud already it's getting tiresome all right i'll see you for smackdown hortensai